Um, my name is Francesca Baird. I'm a technical trainer here at Post Process. Um, I've been here about a year and a half, uh, but before that, I did spend some time doing sales and automation, um, and I also got my bachelor's degree in chemical engineering. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you uh, briefly about who Post Process is and our mission, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about traditional soluble support removal and highlight some of the key pain points associated with these processes. So then I'm going to introduce Post Process's new solution for FDM support removal and then highlight the key benefits when using one of our solutions. Then we're going to go over some case studies that cover some of the most common scenarios that we run into. Hopefully you should be able to relate to certain aspects from each. And then lastly, to wrap things up, I'll briefly summarize and then open the floor to you and whatever questions you may have. Um, so when we're doing that, uh, again, the chat, I do have the chat open on my screen. Um, so you can uh, feel free to enter any questions you might have in there, and then at the end, we'll get to them. So before we jump in, um, I do want to give you a brief introduction of who we are. So Post Process was established as the first comprehensive solution provider for additive manufacturing to post printing. Um, so we entered this space in order to allow the industry to scale to its fullest potential. So we have a range of patent pending machines that run our proprietary software and chemistry in order to provide post print solutions across all additive manufacturing technologies. So moving forward, we are going to speak specifically to the pain points associated with FDM soluble support removal and then the benefits of our solution. Um, however, we do have other opportunities and previously recorded webinars, um, even with CATI, that we have available if you are interested in the other technologies that you see on that screen here. But moving forward, the problems that we've seen across the entire additive industry are the traditional approaches to solve our modern problems. So anyone utilizing traditional manufacturing methods such as tanks, couplers, manual labor are quickly gonna realize that these processes just can't be scaled. So the time consuming nature of each one of these methods reduces the amount of parts that you can post print and this in turn creates a bottleneck for your throughput. And as you continue to grow your production, the significance of this low throughput is going to grow as well. In addition to this, the parts that you are able to post print are going to vary dramatically in quality due to the inconsistent nature of these traditional methods. And all of these pain points together make for ineffective, costly processes that result in drawn out ROIs for your printing. Now I'm going to dive into some of the specific pain points that you'll hopefully be able to relate to if you're using one of these traditional methods. When using a traditional submersion tank, the tank itself, as well as the chemicals that are being used, were not designed with, with additive materials in mind. So consequently, the processing time for each material is going to vary and it's left to the user to determine on their own. So the ineffectiveness of these chemicals lead to really long cycle time that vary heavily depending on how much that detergent has been used. One of the biggest pain points we've discovered in FDM post printing is associated with the use of these traditional submersion tanks. The parts are typically left in these baths for extended periods of time, uh, causing them to absorb the detergent, and this results in ex an extremely waterlogged part. This issue in turn is going to extend your total process time by days, depending on how sparse your part is printed and how long it takes to dry them out. So lastly, in addition to, the, to extending these processing times, absorbing all of that liquid is also going to compromise the integrity of the structure. The warpage of the part is common once it's taken on so much liquid, and this is going to be especially prevalent with geometries that have more fine features. So in addition to that, the issue that we associated with the traditional machinery leads a lot of FDM users to choose manual labor as their primary method for support removal. So methods such as snapping off the supports by hand lead to high breakage rate. Um, the time and the material cost associated with reprinting those damaged parts is also really costly to your production. And while on the topic of cost, it's really important to know how expensive it really is when you're using a heavily manual process. So operators' time is expensive and valuable, and having their time uh, being spent clearing away support or material by hand, uh, you know that they can just be doing more value-added work. And lastly, since each operator is unique and has some degree of human error, each part is going to vary to some degree due to these inconsistencies associated with manual. 
So those process in collaboration with the Society of Manufacturing Engineers, or SME, if you're familiar. Um, last year, we conducted the first ever additive manufacturing post-printing survey. So the report provides an in-depth look from the end user perspective of the common practices and challenges in 3D post-printing today. So what you're seeing here shows you how time-consuming the support removal process is across all additive manufacturing technology. These support removal processes account for 51% of post printing. These numbers show that automating this process and reducing the amount of time operators are spending performing support removal is really key for scaling printing operations. So the key to our solutions is this combination of hardware, software, and chemistry, all specifically designed with FDM materials in mind. In your process today, you're likely sourcing at least two of these components from different vendors. This creates more work for you on top of the fact that these components are not designed and tested to work together specifically for soluble support removal the way that the post-process solution is. So really to wrap things up uh, right before we get into more of the specifics, I really just want to summarize the transformative benefits that you'll experience by switching to a post-process support removal solution. The unique software-driven approach is going to give you the consistency necessary to optimize and plan your workflow. So we remove the bottleneck created by these drawn-out cycle times and allow you to grow your, op your operation. And lastly, by reducing tedious manual labor and unnecessary downtime for drying, our solution is going to make you more productive and accelerate your process from end. So this is a quick slide to summarize all of the benefits that I'm going to go uh, that I'm going to dig into throughout this presentation. So the first topic we're going to discuss is how our solution is going to enable you to have higher throughput. So utilizing a post-process uh, solution for your FTM support removal will allow you to increase your throughput in two different ways. The combination of our proprietary hardware and chemistry is going to significantly reduce cycle. Across our installation base, we've seen a minimum of 50% cycle time reduction. So this is attributed to the effectiveness of our FDM-specific chemistry combined with our mechanical energy management. So then the second part of this throughput component is the introduction of our automated software. By introducing software, we've been able to reduce the amount of attendant technician time from hours with traditional support removal to just minutes when using one of our solutions. We recently uh, just released a white paper, um, and a couple of the points that um, it really highlights is the fact that we were able to achieve more than 70% on average reduction for this cycle time. So this was across SR30, SR100, and ST130, and we compared our solution to an SCA tank with Waterworks. Uh, we talk about some accessories that help you with uh, different geometries and catering to those. And then we really talk about being able to ramp up to production levels with the use of one of our solutions. So if this uh, presentation grabs your attention and you want some more specifics, this white paper is a really great way to dive into uh, more data surrounding it. So now we're gonna talk about how speeding up your dry time is really going to accelerate uh, your process from end to end. So we utilize uh, a volume spray or a VBD technology that speeds up your cycle time. So how quickly those supports are removed is dramatically quicker than in a submersion tank, but then it reduces how much time you're spending drying those parts out. So this is especially important for parts that are going to undergo a further operation, such as sanding or painting, where the part has to be void of any moisture. So on average, our users have reported dry times a third of as long as they were experiencing with traditional submersion tanks. And then lowering the part defects is going to come from two key components as well. First, uh, as I spoke to before, that reduced liquid exposure. So this is important because the more, more exposure a part has, the more it will, absorb, it will absorb, and then in turn, that's going to negatively affect the part's dimensional accuracy. So this is going to be really critical for parts with thin walls and fine feature details. And then the second component is our chemistry's effectiveness at lower temperatures. So 
Processing FDM materials at lower temperatures reduces the risk that they're either going to warp or break during your post-trip. And our whole solution, each, each part of that comprehensive solution, the hardware, the software, and the chemistry, has all been designed to be really easy for you to use. So the software is super intuitive. Um, you'll see what our interface looks like. It almost has a smartphone-like feel to it. Uh, with just a few clicks on the HMI, you can see everything that your part is undergoing, or you don't have to do any of that. You can just click one button and let the recipe run. We have proactive and preventative maintenance warnings, allowing you to plan ahead for downtime, further allowing you to streamline your process. And then that one button recipe selection allows you to compete and reduce the amount of error that you might see from operator to operator, especially when it comes to those challenging geometries. And then finally, our hands-free chemistry eliminates any extensive handling or mixing of chemicals by users, and then any of the hazards associated with it. And I've talked about the software a little bit, but it really is an extremely unique component to our solutions. So as I said, it's supposed to be really intuitive. I know people can start to let their walls go up a little bit as soon as you start talking about software, but we really tried to boil it down to these simple parameters always going to be agitation, temperature, and time. And the software enables you the flexibility to stay agile with the industry as you can continue to update this software as we all continue to learn together. So as more materials continue to be developed, we can quickly adjust the temperatures without being restricted. And then lastly, the process monitoring achieved by our sensors that are monitored by our software ensure that you're always running within the correct energy levels. So this makes sure that your parts aren't damaged due to overprocessing without having to have any operator intervention. And another thing I really like to emphasize is the fact that we are solely focused on additive manufacturing. So we can act as a resource to you both pre-sale to make sure that the solution is right for you. And then as well, we can provide you industry-specific support for the lifetime of your solution. We can act as a resource for you as you continue to scale and expand your printing operations. Just one of these things that we have to help you are uh, include multiple PhD chemists whose sole role is to stay on the bleeding edge of this uh, ever-expanding list of additive materials and make sure that our solutions are staying agile with the industry. So while we're talking about materials, um, I'll briefly leave up here a list of uh, support materials that we have effectively removed. Um, so if you don't see a support that you're using here, that doesn't mean our solution won't work. Um, it just means that it potentially hasn't been tested in-house. Uh, so this is always subject to change. Please get in contact with us if you're doing something else or you have a question. Uh, we're always happy to help and continue to learn what other materials are out there. Um, so now talking about some ROIs uh, and case study examples. So we'll get into some specific ones later, but I really like to highlight the fact um, that Toro, this is um, Toro Motor Company that you might be familiar with their uh, lawnmowers, but they were so happy with, that, with their results that they collaborated with us uh, on a press release and as well on a, web on a webinar. So that's something that you could go tune into. It was just sort of asking, you know, how they came to coming to post-process, how they implemented our solution, and then the changes that they've seen because of that. So Toro was able to reduce uh, the time that they were spending performing support removal from days to just hours by utilizing post-process. So now I'll get into some more specific examples. Uh, but I do wanna talk about exactly what um, our ROIs really dig into. So a few of the key numbers that we look at are your labor cost, the time spent processing each part, and how much is damaged. So we take these and then we compare them with what your post printing cost would look like with one of our solutions, and then this results in an ROI. So getting started, the first case we're going to be looking at, the customer was using a traditional submersion tank and they had significant internal support structures. So they were printing 36 parts per day, and they were able to fit six parts per cycle in our machine. Their labor rate was $40 per hour, 
And by moving over to a post-process solution, we were able to save them uh, just under three hours in technician time per cycle. So all of that time per cycle resulted in just about saving them $5,000 a week. On top of that, their cycle time was reduced by over 85%. So not only are we reducing the amount of time that part is spending in the machine, we're also reducing the amount of time that the technician is spending on the part. You can see how this resulted in a really rapid uh, ROI. The machine that you're looking at here is our base, our larger option. And then another example with a, on the lower throughput side of things, they were using another traditional submersion tank with sparse parts. So they were printing 20, 20 parts per day. You could fit 44 parts in per cycle with that 40 hour labor rate. The amount of time that we were able to save them was just about an hour per cycle. And not only that, we did reduce the cycle time by over 70%. So all that time saved was um, able to save them just about $2,000 per week, which resulted in a 35 week ROI for our smaller machine, which is our desk. This is all the content that I had for you guys today. If any of this information, you know, piques your interest and you want to hear about more, um, you can email CATI at CATI.com or call them at that number.